just over the weekend as South Africa's Banyana Banyana played the world's number one ranked team, the USA, the world champions uh, on three occasions, uh, the Olympic champions on uh, four occasions with that goalkeeper there, Hope Solo, celebrating an opportunity that she could be 100 games without uh, having conceded a goal. That is unbelievable. However, let's talk to two of the ladies who are there. They were in Chicago, they were part of Banyana Banyana, and they got to experience what it's like to play against the world champions. Janine, as well as Namatama, welcome to Sport at 10. How are you guys? Good, how are you doing? Nimnand. Good, yeah. thank you very much. Should we speak much. in American? I don't know how to speak <laughs> these days, because you know you've been to the States, right? so you know, how's it going, you know? It's great, man, it's great. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> no, I'm going to ask you, because I'm going to ask you, so I'm going to ask you and speak a little bit. How was it? Uh, I think it was a great experience. Uh, we, we had a great time, mm. and it was an honor for, for most of us as players, and a, a privilege that we will always cherish. Uh, all thanks to Sasol and Safa for the trip. Now, how important was this as an experience in terms of getting you ready for the Olympic Games? Because the USA is not in your group. I mean, so that's not uh, a, a situation that we could say, OK, we learned this. What did we go there to prepare for? Yeah, I think uh, we've, been preparing, uh, we, we've been preparing for a long time now. And uh, it was about time that we see how, how far we are, how far the team has come. And I think it started with the, with the trip to Netherlands, and it was the trip that actually gave us a, a, a perspective of, of how far we are. And I think both games came at the right time. Yeah! <laughs> I, I won. I'm a, I, there's one or two things I want to, and I'm going to bring you in, Jamie. I know you're itching to get in. It's like a very strong game, Foxy. But I'm going to defend. I'm going to for a second. The one thing, though, as much as there's all this talk of preparing and getting ourselves ready, scoring. Your partner next door, <laughs> as scoring. Both games against Holland, 1-0, 2-0, we got beaten. 1-0, foot mind you, we got beaten. I'm a cold in that. I'm a cold in I'm Yeah, I think it, it's been a highlight in, in the past uh, camp. Uh, obviously, in terms of defending, I think we're getting it right. Mm. And Ukochi, has has started like i said highlighting like attacker you know so yeah we we trusting that in the coming camp we will make sure that we're ready what's your main nickname yak bambi's a microphone <laughs> so, <laughs> i mean i'm not name new nickname i'm not name microphone in puma because there's no more what's it to microphone because i call it the way they call it a corner in the build-up to the qualification for the olympic games yeah. you're on fire five goals in qualifying including and i need us to, i need you to take south africa back equatorial guinea mm -hmm. they've beaten banyana banyana yeah. at two african women's championships finals mm -hmm. They're, most people expecting that they're better than Banyana. Yeah. In the last qualifier, to go to the Olympics, we're in Bata. Yeah. We're in Equatorial Guinea. Mm -hmm. Throw a nil nil lie at home. <laughs> I, when you guys got on the plane, it's our last buoy. La, I see the Olympics in. So <laughs> to win at, in Equatorial yeah. Guinea to qualify, then you got involved. I mean, it was, it was a great experience for the entire team, and, and we wanted to win. Uh, I mean, the disappointment of not qualifying for the World Cup was in our minds. And, and I know, I mean, when we drew it, it, in South Africa, it was, I had opportunity and I felt like I let my team down. And so going there... You may see it. You may see it, You may see it, lad. That's you. Someone's gonna go, man. Yeah, and I felt like I let my team down. And so going there, uh, I knew that it was, it, was, it was not just on my shoulders, but as a striker, it's my job to score. And so... Uh, when I got an opportunity, I, I put it away, and, and, and that's what I'm here to do. I mean, it, it's hard as a striker, you know, you get your opportunities, and when you miss it, you kind of feel bad because the team has worked so hard to get your opportunities. And so you, felt, you feel like you let them down a, a, in doing your job, what, what Coach Vera brought you here to do. And so uh, when we went over there, I mean, I was just telling myself, Jermaine, when you get an opportunity to score, you better put it away. And so... Uh, I try to do that. You know, Jermaine, the most amazing part of this is that you really sound American. I do. <laughs> do. And, and uh, I mean, I, and we need to explain. You're spending a lot of your life in the USA. Yeah. You're playing football there. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. What are you doing? Uh, I mean, uh, playing in the US, is, it's amazing. I mean, you get so much experience. I, felt, I feel like my confidence has gone from, you know, the little 17-year-old coming into the team 
to like the mature 22 year old now um, and, it, and it's just like changes your perspective on soccer and, and how hard you have to work uh, in going to the US I mean uh, everyone works hard <coughs> and is talented and so every game is tough it, it, uh, it's it's a hard, it's hard work and so every game you have to give your all and so uh, you kind of learn from from that and so when I come back to the national team uh, I kind of put everything into it because I've learned so much uh, from playing in the U.S. But I mean, it's amazing. You get the culture, just a different experience to being in South Africa. She's speaking deep south now. She's from, she's studying in Alabama. You know, she's got that deep south thing going on. I'm out of my Cape Town. I'm out of my Cape Town. I'm truly stunned. I mean, I know when you immersed in a culture, you kind of pick it up, yeah. but like so quickly, you sound yeah. American. I mean, you've been I, there, what, like a year and a half? No, like almost three years now. Three years? Yeah. So, uh, I don't and they don't understand you when you speak like us, right? Yeah, they, that's they, the problem. Like, huh? Huh? That's the problem. I think like uh, Africans don't realize. Like when you go over there, and like when I first got there, my teammates were like, "What?" Like 15 times, probably 15 times, they were like, "What? What? What?" Huh? And so, uh, like you kind of adjust. Start to roll yeah. your tongue. No, I don't roll no, you it. just do. You just do. Yeah, because you kind of like stand. adjust the way you speak to, so that they can understand you. You don't want to be on the field and be like, "Hey, hey," and they don't understand what you say. Uh. And so, I mean, you just kind of adjust it. But I mean, my sisters were like, you better not come back with an American accent. Well, you're back and you have it, <laughs> so it's done now. However, the last thing we need to talk about very quickly is, there is a chance. I mean, the way the group is set up, there's three groups at the Olympic Games. The top two automatically go through, and then the best third place, two teams, best third place from those three groups can go through to the knockout mm -hmm. stages. We have a really good chance, don't we? We really do. I mean. Uh, we've prepared, Coltrera has set out so many things for us to do and, and get better. And so I think uh, going there, we kind of, playing against the U.S. has given us so much more confidence. I feel like we've, did, we've done so well against them. And so we realize that we are good enough and mm. we can go there and do well against these top 20, like the teams that are in the top 20. And so you kind of, you understand that, hey, yes, we can get out of this group. We can do well. We can get good results. No more Sure. Maracanã. Now you played in Chicago, hey. but you're playing Brazil now in the Maracanã. I've been there. I don't know if you have anything. You, I don't even know what you 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 do. You understand the Maracanã? Uh, no. <laughs> the I most don't. unbelievable stadium. It is gonna be spectacular. I wish I was there. I hope it's not over. I, I call it overpowering because it can be one of those venues that you can freeze in. Would that not happen? Uh, we hope not. Uh, I think it, 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 things like that, it's things that uh, are part and parcel of the game. Mm. They come with the game. And it will be important for us to make sure that we don't get overwhelmed by all those things. And we keep focused. I'll say, so banana pambili. And I'll say, see you later. <laughs> Uh, maybe that's like, I don't know if that's like, <laughs> maybe that was an Australian accent, I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> Shampunai is standing by. Shampunai, what do you got for us? Yeah, Tom, I don't have marsh for you, man, because I'm sitting here thinking about Jermaine, you know what I'm saying? Jermaine, can you give advice to Castro? <laughs> Please, <laughs> he's been here. Eh? I'm waiting know, for him to just one day and say, oh, you could be just like me now, young king. <laughs> just one. Uh, Coach Martin, do you know that when you coach Pirates, ne, there will always be a song about you? So just don't be surprised if you walk on stadium and then there's Mchenua, Mchenua, it's you. What are you expecting? <laughs> Do you know any of the song? Of course I know. <laughs> if he knows the song, then the song is official. Mchenua, Mchenua, Thomas, 